This is Boom Bus broadcasting around the world from Washington, D.C. I'm Bart Chilton, and thank you for joining us. Coming up today, we're boom busting to the edges of the program. Melissa Armo helps us analyze Elon Musk's unusual Tesla tweet. We also look at why Uber, Lyft, and other ride-hailing services might soon become more costly and tougher to find in New York City and potentially other cities around the world with the able assist of RT's Trinity Chavez. And Alex Mihailovic considers the escalating clash and conflict between Canada and Saudi Arabia. What's the potential business and financial impact? He'll tell us. Plus, we'll examine the right to work referendum we noted on the program last time in Missouri and discuss what it might mean for U.S. labor laws with boom bust own Daniel Brito. Plus, many of us recall the controversial Dakota access in Keystone XL pipelines. Well, now there's another brewing pipeline controversy. Archie's Manila Chan will fill us in on the details. And as housing prices after four years may finally be starting to slow, what does that mean for the U.S. housing market? Kathy Fetke, the CEO, co-CEO of Real Wealth Network, gives us her take. All that ahead, but we pop start with Tesla and the unusual tweet by Elon Musk yesterday that we noted on the broadcast. Coming up, we have Melissa Armo. Here's what happened. Yesterday, Mr. Musk sent market trading into a tizzy after tweeting, quote, am considering taking Tesla private at $420. Funding secured. Tesla shares soared, then hit a circuit breaker where NASDAQ trading was temporarily halted. Tesla stock ended, closing up 11% on the day. And here to help us out is the aforementioned CEO of the stock swoosh, Melissa Armo. Wow, Melissa, this was really a bombshell, wasn't it? And Mr. Musk has talked previously about uh, the short sellers that he was, they were going to take a hit. Uh, this certainly uh, struck them in the, the shorts, didn't it? Yes, it did, and I have breaking news actually to announce right now. Three minutes ago, it was just it was just announced that the SEC is investigating what Elon Musk texted out. So that is breaking news. It just happened three minutes ago. Uh, so we, we appreciate I don't know you doing that. that. That's great. And you know, when when I saw this, it did remind me of thinking about the SEC uh, back to that circumstance in 2012 when the the Netflix CEO Reed Hastings posted not Twitter, but he posted on his Facebook, his personal Facebook. Facebook site that they had streamed 1 billion hours of content in a month. And, you know, that was obviously had an impact on their stock price. And that resulted in SEC guidance about the fair disclosure rule. And so uh, it doesn't surprise me uh, about this, but he could be in some uh, potential legal jeopardy, I suppose, right? Well, the, the stock had a gimongous move yesterday. It was unprecedented. In one day, the stock lifted and almost made a new high. And it did have a great earnings report, and it did rally on the earnings a couple of days ago. But the move it had on Tuesday was unprecedented. And it ran up to 387. Previous high in the stock had been 389. So that tweet did incite buying in the stock. And not only that, as you had mentioned, Tesla is one of the most heavily shorted stocks right now. For some reason, people are, are, are not, I guess, believing in, in what the company's doing or what they want to do. For only a brief period, and this was months and months ago, back at the end of March into the beginning of April, did the stock look like it was starting to turn, technically speaking, into a downtrend. But it lifted back up again very quickly, and it's rallied ever since. I would never have been short that stock after it decided that it didn't want to continue to decline. And the earnings, like I said, were good. So people are betting against Elon Musk and people are betting against Tesla and I'm, I'm not I don't think that he sent that tweet out to necessarily create a scare a scurry of buying but I'm, I'm I, I mean I don't really know if he's serious about this or not but there's there's an upside and there's a downside the downside is they're gonna lack capital if they end up deciding to go private if they want to do all these creative things which he likes to do the upside is that he's not gonna have to deal with the scrutiny of being a public corporation anymore so it, it is unclear if he has financing, where's the financing coming from? There's been so much talk and scuttlebutt about it. There's, uh, you know, so many Chinese funds out there that would probably love to buy Tesla and have the money to do it. But the question is, would, would CFIS, the U U.S. government agency, would they allow that to even go through? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I imagine that there are a lot of general counsels at, uh, you know, public companies all over the, the country, and especially there in, in New York, uh, talking to their CEOs and their VPs about what they should and shouldn't do, and rereading that, uh, I, I pulled it out earlier here uh, today, that uh, SEC 
uh, uh, the, the thing from 2013, the, the Reed Hastings, their guidance again, and uh, it's really important. And it says, look, you know, social media is new, but that can have an impact on investors. So be very careful. You do all the dil due diligence you need. Hey, before we let you go, Melissa, I want to ask you about another thing. News breaking today. Sure. We're breaking all sorts of news. Congressman Chris Collins, an incumbent congressman from New York, was arrested and charged by the federal prosecutors with insider trading and lying to the FBI. And the story is that I guess the congressman delivered non-public information about this Australian company, Innate Immunotherapeutics, a, a firm which he's a principal shareholder, and he gave the information to his son, and his son supposedly gave it to others to trade upon, and the U.S. attorney, uh, J Jeffrey Berman, said, uh, look, he cheated our markets and our justice system. What do you make of this? Well, again, you know, innocent until proven guilty otherwise. But so far, the news that's out there, the story is of the case against him is that he called his son. His son owned stock in that company and sold the stock before the news became public. And not only that, I also read that the son shorted the stock. So then when the drop happened, the son made money on that. And then the son's fiance and the son's fiance's father. So there's a, there's a chain there of family members. Now, whether or not he did anything illegal himself per these laws and regulations, that is for the attorneys to decide because apparently he did not sell any of his own stock or short the stock. So telling someone, is is that illegal? I don't know. Again, yeah, he's going to yeah, have good is. representation, I'm sure. It, it is. is. It, it is. Yeah. Is it? When yeah, his well, defense is he didn't make money on it, uh, boy, that's not a good that's one. That's right. Uh, so we'll be following it and talking about it more in the program. Melissa, thank you so much for endeavoring us on, on that one, too. And thanks for all the Tesla stuff. We'll see you again. Melissa Armo, sure. the CEO of the Stock Swoosh.